Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my review of Titans Season 2, Episode 13, the finale of this season. And yes, it has been renewed for a third. Now, before I go into this, uh, because this is the first review I've done of this, this is a requested thing, probably by a few people. I don't expect a huge amount of traction on this video. Um... I need to give a, a quick overview of how I've found the season so far. So you, so you know sort of from the angle that I'm coming at. And I've got to say that Titan Season 2 has been excellent. I mean really, really good. In actual fact, both seasons I think have been very, very good indeed. This was a weird one because this was a show that uh, put out a couple of very bad trailers when it was first being marketed and it didn't look good at all. The CGI looked very bad, very ropey. Uh, the whole characterization of some of the people looked really wonky. Starfire basically looking like a 1970s black exploitation hooker. Uh, Dick Grayson, fuck bad man. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, oh no, what are you doing? But when you actually watch the show, the production was good. Yeah, the CGI is not the greatest, but the production of the show was, was really good. The writing was excellent. And more importantly, the characterization was superb. Um, and so I, I thoroughly enjoyed season one. And then when season two came along, holy cow, it, it, it I think it got better this season than its prior. I think they felt more comfortable uh, now that they were getting a second season, I felt as if they were hitting their stride in terms of who the characters were. Uh, they were developing very distinct personalities and the character, the actors, I should really say, were becoming more familiar with their characters. And the addition of Deathstroke was genius. Uh, Deathstroke is a, a great character and for Titan Season 2 to kind of do a Judas contract-esque uh, storyline wasn't a bad idea at all it, it was uh, a very clever idea indeed uh, and Deathstroke was horrific it was a horrific person it was very well told because he was still a character that you could empathize with you believed that he loved his wife you believed that he loved Jericho maybe not so much uh, Rose maybe not so much his daughter uh, but uh, yes you uh, certainly got uh, the idea that this man had a job to do and he was doing his job and he was being paid very well for it. Uh, the development of Dick Grayson was brilliant with the introduction of Jason Todd. Jason Todd becoming the second Robin, replacing Dick Grayson, who was still wearing his Robin outfit, but because he was now estranged from Bruce Wayne Batman, uh, Bruce had recruited a, another psychic had recruited another robin uh to his army and it was jason todd and and the character jason todd was brilliant uh he's obnoxious he's annoying he's arrogant he's overconfident uh but he's a good fighter he's jason todd this is Jason Todd. This is how Jason Todd is written in the comics. And this is ultimately what leads to Jason Todd's downfall. Is his overconfidence. Is his uh, ability to, to isolate himself at times. All this kind of stuff. So uh, Jason Todd was always a very flawed character. And many have uh, put it down to uh, Bruce making a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to filling the void of dick grayson and it, it all works from a, from a story perspective uh, it all works it, it comes together hawk and dove when i heard that they were going to be in the titans i was just like how are you going to make these characters even remotely realistic or believable uh you know i, I wouldn't even call hawk and dove b list or c list or d list they were kind of you know, off the radar completely in terms of in terms of superheroes, but uh, my goodness me, uh, they were just done perfectly. Two very damaged people finding solidarity in each other and uh, becoming a team and uh, developing a, a personal relationship because of it. Uh, we saw a little bit of Donna Troy season one. 
we saw a little bit more of her in season two, but I never thought the character really got off the ground. Uh, the most interesting aspect of Donna Troy in season two was really when Deathstroke absolutely took her apart one on one. Uh, she was obviously taken unaware. She wasn't prepared for the fight, but hey, that's what Deathstroke does. And of course, he had just massacred a bunch of uh, Themyscarans. Uh, so she was also very uh, vulnerable at that moment too. But the whole point of season two for Deathstroke was divide and conquer. Divide the Titans and then conquer them. Uh, so it was a, a strategy that worked very well indeed. Starfire uh, got a little bit more about her this season. I never... Um, I never bought in to the relationship with Dick Grayson in season one. They had no chemistry together as, as actors. Uh, it felt rushed because they, you know, wanted to pay homage to the fact that, that Nightwing and Starfire have, you know, had a long relationship in the Titan comics. And it didn't work. Thankfully, they didn't stick with it. Uh, and it didn't remain for long. And she came a little bit into uh, her own in this series with the introduction of her trying to be pulled back to a planet to ascend to the throne and then being stranded here on Earth and ultimately in this episode now having no powers at all. She's lost all of her powers completely. Uh, and then Raven. Uh, Raven, Rachel Raven. Uh, she's been very solid, you know. Uh, it's a very young actress. I think she was only 15, maybe 14 uh, when she started the role. So it's a very young actress who's, who's, who's coming into this. And... She's getting more confident and she's becoming a little bit better. But again, I still think there needs to be a little bit more development with that character. Uh, a little bit more development with her. She tends to be, she tends to kind of go for a little bit one note uh, when delivering lines regardless of, of the situation. And I, I gravitated a lot more, to, uh, or empathised I should really say, a lot more with Garth uh, this season. With Beast Boy. Because Beast Boy was very generic in season one there wasn't too much development with the character but in season two we actually got to see uh, a little bit more about garth and a little bit more about uh his vulnerability and and when he was abducted by cadmus uh the actor actually really did uh portray his his sort of um descent uh very well indeed so i was highly impressed and I did enjoy the way that they took a character who was very, like I said, quite generic and and almost cartoonish in the first season to some degree uh, and turned him into a bit of a fearful character in season two where he was being let loose and just tearing people apart in his, in his beast boy mode, you know, in his tiger mode. Uh, so they did a great job. Then we had the introduction of Ian Glenn's Bruce Wayne and I say Bruce Wayne and not Batman because Ian Glenn never once donned the bat suit in this season. I do have a wish for season 3. I really want to see Ian Glenn in a bat suit with Jason Todd in a Robin suit next to him because Ian Glenn's relatively tall. Uh the Robin actor for Jason Todd's pretty small. <laughs> it would be a great physical uh uh, uh aesthetic uh, for you to see and uh we did see some some excellent glimpses of of how this batman would work in the series which is very intriguing and that's what makes me really want to see this and we know that batman isn't part of the titans never been part of the titans he's not in that you know world he's an outsider he's a justice leaguer uh etc uh but when um we see him and he's very calm and he's very composed and he actually plays a, a, a more world-wise, not world-wide, world-wise uh, Bruce Wayne. There's a little bit more empathy uh, in this Bruce Wayne, but you can definitely still see this, this cold, you know, this coldness to the character, especially when uh, Dick Grayson imagines him because Dick Grayson isn't just imagining him for the hell of it. Dick Grayson is, is drawing upon uh, his training he's drawing upon uh, when Bruce was training him up and you can imagine that it would have been a very cold a very uh, hard process to go through for for such a young lad uh, particularly when Bruce would still be you know very much hurting from his parents death in terms of the, the vengeance which is driving his Batman uh, so in that in, in that aspect to see this real more more relaxed more worldwide 
uh, Bruce Wayne giving advice uh, to Dick Grayson, uh, never losing his composure at any time whatsoever. You could always see him totally in charge. And I think the the optimum moment of their relationship, because we'll, get, well, no, I won't get into this season, uh, this episode just yet. The optimum moment of their relationship was when uh, Dick Grayson was imagining him fight Bruce Wayne. And the way that Ian Glenn just sort of puffed out his chest and his stance, his shoulders come out, and it, he, he did look very imposing indeed. And then when Dick's coming at him as, as hard as he can, that sounds a bit weird, but just go with it. Uh, Dick's coming at him uh, as hard as he can. Ladies. Uh, the the minimal effort of movement by Bruce is uh, incredible. Like he goes for a leg sweep and he just literally just lifts his leg up a little bit so the, the, the leg will go underneath. Just really showing off that fighting training. It was, I thought the fight between the two of them was was excellent. Absolutely excellent. Uh, of course, it was all in his head, but it's still training that he would have had against Bruce. He would be imagining Bruce's counters, his counters, you know. So, so it all worked. It worked very nicely indeed. So all in all, coming up to the finale... And I know I've spoken for over 10 minutes, but I think it's important that we set the, set the stage uh, of the season so far. So coming into the finale, I was so excited for this episode uh, because I think it's been superb and kind of breaks my heart a little bit to say I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed with the finale. They didn't stick the landing. They, it was a very weird episode. Uh, weird in as much as it didn't feel as if it flowed. It, it felt as if it was a lot of scenes stuck together. And uh, and they didn't seem to flow and there didn't seem to be an ebb about it. Uh, it felt very clunky. And uh, uh, I was really surprised at the ending because when everything sort of finishes, when all the, the fights are over... There's about 15 minutes of the episode left. So I'm thinking, okay, there's something's going to happen. Something, some setup's going to develop here for the last 15 minutes, which is really going to take us into season three. And it, and there wasn't. Uh, there wasn't. It was such a, a weird, tame, uh, sort of 15 minutes of, of not a lot. Some weird dialogue with Bruce Wayne that didn't seem to fit the character. So... Let, let's get into let's get into the episode itself, and, and I'll, I'll hopefully uh, be able to to get a little more into it. So we get a you know recap of the season, and it starts off with Mercy Graves, uh, who is uh, essentially hocking out Connor, uh, the Superboy character, and I think Connor's been brilliant so far, uh, mentally undertuned. Uh, physically, obviously the body of a, a young 20-something-year-old, half genetic material of ba uh, Superman, half genetic material of Lex Luthor. Uh, so we have this uh, bizarre sort of hybrid between the two. He's got Superman's powers, but he's also uh, got part of Lex's immorality. So the decisions which he's made, which haven't quite clicked, uh, and they've managed to, to cut into his brain and, and essentially make him subservient so you tell him what to do he'll do it for you so he's being sold to the highest bidder essentially as some one-man superhero police force i suppose it can be abused and used for other things but that's where it's going and uh, he shows off his tricks mercy so confident in uh what connor can actually do just gonna lift this up a little bit there we go uh, that she puts herself in harm's way. She lets Connor shoot her and then run and catch the bullet. To which they all applaud when they see that. Uh, and so that's, you know, that was the demonstration uh, that they gave. And, and then whatever Mercy said, Connor would respond to. So he would, and she actually says, good dog. Which is quite patronizing. Considering Crypto is in this as well. And Crypto is, is awesome. He's been a good boy. Uh, and then she kills off uh, this guy over here uh, when the uh, screens... <laughs> Connor's still got the bullet in his hand and he throws it into his head <laughs> because he got captured last week by uh, Donna Troy and Dove. Uh, 
By the way, Minka Kelly. Hi. Anytime you want to chat, just call me. Uh, right, okay, let's move on. So this is this is where a lot of the action takes place in this episode, in this, this fairground here. And uh, this, literally, this pylon, this lighting pylon, is going to come back to disappoint massively <laughs> as the episode goes on. Uh, so we have Garth, who's been let loose in Phase 2. Uh, Garth, who can now be controlled by Cadmus Labs as well. He's had the same sort of programming as Connor. So what they're doing is they're, they're setting up Garth to be the villain, and then they bring Connor along, and Connor is the solution. So they're creating their own problem, and then they're fixing it themselves, and they're making themselves look like the heroes. The superhero initiative with the clone Superman, etc. So I get that. That's all good stuff. So they play the music, which triggers Garth. He turns into uh, Beast Boy, and we imagine lets loose uh, on the innocent bystanders of the fairground. Uh, we then get uh, a scene where ladies just hung a chit-chat because they haven't dicks AWOL at the moment. We know from last week that he's picked up the Nightwing outfit. But uh, they're strategizing what their next plan of action is going to be. It's kind of very... They're very segmented... Uh, titans now but that's because of deathstroke they've, they've kind of come together but again hawk is off he's been uh drugging himself back up again he's been doing his fighting again and and he's in a, in a mess dick grayson's gone todd jason todd has gone after his argument with uh, ravager so there's there's a very fragmented titans again again but they get the call that there's a disturbance of an animal down at the local fair. So they're just like, Garth, it's got to be Garth. Uh, so they start to head towards the fair. Now, when they do, they are just out of the blue, um, ambushed by Deathstroke, which feels a little wibbly-wobbly, but we can give the benefit of the doubt that, you know, Deathstroke's got eyes on them. Maybe he's tracking them. We know that he's you know, place, but, you know, have things done to the uh, Titans apartment and all this kind of stuff. So we can give the benefit, but it still felt a bit clunky that he'd, you know, know exactly the route, but whatever. So he starts shooting away at the car. Lo and behold, Dick Grayson turns up in his Nightwing outfit. Can I just backtrack a little bit to see if um, we get a good shot? Look at this outfit. This outfit is beautiful. This is a beautiful Nightwing outfit. So Dick Grayson turns up and starts to uh, fight with Deathstroke. Uh, we know from the previous episode that Jericho is alive and his, his spirit has been transplanted into uh, Deathstroke. And Dick Grayson starts calling out to Jericho during the fight, hoping to uh, weaken Deathstroke's will, get, allowing Jericho to take more control and hopefully maybe take control of Deathstroke's body. It doesn't quite happen. Uh, he fights very well indeed. He's got his taser sticks. I don't know what the, the official martial art term is for them, but he's got his taser sticks <laughs> that he has at, uh, in Batman Arkham games and stuff like that. I think he actually uses them in the comics now as well, the taser sticks. Um, but, you know, Deathstroke is still a, a, a huge, you know, a very, very vicious fighter. You can see him behind me. I've got my Deathstroke there. I love the guy. The guy guy's just got such a great aesthetic to him as well. Uh, and he's got enhanced abilities, uh, which we'll get to slightly later. But, you know, not just strength, speed, and all that sort of stuff, but uh, healing factor as well. Uh, so it looks like uh, Ravenger has come to help her father, or at least Deathstroke thinks so. And then she's just like, no, actually, I'm on the side of the Titans. And she uh, she sides with the, the Titans. So it now becomes a two-on-one fight. Uh, which Deathstroke isn't too happy about. So they they fight, you know, some take some licks, some don't take some licks. And then, boosh, Ravenger uh, manages to stick uh, Deathstroke with a sword while uh, just after he knocked uh, Dick Grayson down. So it's a divide and conquer uh, victory. Uh, now, Dick's not happy that she killed him because, uh, as we know, Batman has a no-kill policy. Uh, something I could really talk about for hours, but I won't in this video. And uh, oh, sorry, 
Deathstroke giving it all that ass. Dude. Oh, yeah. Giving it all that ass. Um, but it just felt like it, it weakened Deathstroke enough for Jericho to leap across into Ravager. So Jericho is now inhabiting his half-sister's body uh, as well. So as regards to how they're going to deal with who controls what and when, when she gives control over, if she gives control over, is he going to, you know, get involved next season? I'd like to think so. I'd like more of a permanent body for him, though, uh, because Ravager is, is, is a very interesting character in herself, and to have Jericho occupying her could actually diminish the character somewhat but we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see but i don't think uh deathstroke's dead in actual fact this is how i thought things were going to play out we know that deathstroke's got a healing factor so i thought they leave him for dead and they go to the fair they sort the fair out and just as everything seems to be okay then deathstroke turns up again and we have the final final showdown yeah. no uh no completely wrong uh this is where it, it leaves it this is where it bizarrely leaves it so they um turn up to the fair uh mercy's just like uh, okay connor time for you to take out the beast uh and show the people uh, what they've got so the bidding can, can take place and i think the bidding got to like 220 something million and then bruce wayne uh got himself in the way and and, and blocked the uh satellite link so they couldn't watch or bid on it any longer and then the ladies turn up starfire donna troy and dove minka uh any time uh any any time day or night i'm good uh just just give us a holler i'll give you my my okay i'll move on uh, now it's all there's some really bizarre banter here. It didn't quite flow. Uh, I think it was meant to be a little bit quirky and a little bit amusing, but it came across as a little bit awkward, a little bit awkward. But I do, I do love the Donna out, uh, the Donna Troy um, Supergirl uh, Wonder Girl outfit. I do think it's great. I do think it's very nice indeed. But again, I don't think we've seen the last of Donna Troy. But we'll get to that in a moment as well. And then, uh, as probably everyone thought, uh, Raven calms down garth uh, garth calm down raven in the first episode it's a mirror it's poetry <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like the the rhyme okay we don't need to go into that and then we have a, a, a cheeky little fight between uh, donna troy and uh, connor uh, we've got uh, half kryptonian g uh, going up against uh, themiscaran and uh, she can take a punch which makes her being easily taken down by Deathstroke earlier in the season feel a little bit weird. And I know that she was taken off guard, and I know that uh, she was obviously a little bit more head head screwed because of what had happened to her fellow Theraskemans, whatever, Theraskarians. Uh, but uh, it just seems odd that, that Connor can give her a, a massive patonka and she can... You know, she can fight through it. So, kind of, a eh, little bit weird. A little bit weird. So, they, they end up hanging a bit of a scrap. Connor, Connor kind of chucks her away. She talks to Connor in, uh, I think, in Kryptonian. I think she knows the language of Kryptonian. And and Connor's not himself. He's not responding at all. So, he's, he's systematically uh, taking them all out. Hawk turns up out of nowhere with a big hammer. <laughs> Ladies. Uh, from the fairground, you know... Uh, test of strength thingy and jiggy um which is quite funny but he seems completely off his tree he seems as if he's high as a kite on drugs when he's fighting uh they use the heat vision connor's heat vision they reflect it back on him uh to take him out temporarily uh to give them a respite and then uh bruce wayne this is where bruce wayne cuts all the feed and he's just chilling in the back cave uh, drinking himself some look at Ian Glenn just happy chilling chilling inside there drinking himself some tea Earl Grey hot uh, Dick Grayson joins the fight uh, uses a a grenade of some variety <laughs> to get into the fight 
and uh, there's Rachel just eventually calming down Garth. Remember, Garth gets naked when he uh, transforms from beast form back into human form. That was a joke in season one. And uh, so they put their plan in action of locking Connor with the lasso, uh, Wonder Girl's lasso, and then uh, Raven uh, allows Dick Grayson to get into Connor's mind. Uh, this is this is con. Well, you can't see because I'm in the way. Connor is is like hiding in a in a corner in a darkened room. Uh, Dick smashes the walls down around him, allowing him uh, to to get out. They have a little chat together, a little bit of bonding, and then he, uh, Connor feels the sun. Obviously, Kryptonians are powered by solar energy, so it's it's an awakening of sorts for Connor. And then we have this. I love this. I thought this was beautiful. This, uh, I want to say cornfield. I'm not sure if it is a cornfield or just a field of, of, of something. But I just think cornfield because I just think Kansas and I just think Superman when I saw this. But it feels very Kansas-esque, very Smallville-esque. So I did really like that. And uh, this is where they just finalize the bonding saying, you know, corn sunshine. Come on, sunshine. Let's get it on. So Connor's just like, you want to you wanna step back a bit, matey? And then, boosh, flies out into the sky, which essentially unlocks him from the mind prison, the mind control that Cadmus has got over him. And Connor uh, rejoins the land of living. So this is where I think everything now is like, right, there's uh, half of the episode left to go. Yes, there was. There's half of the episode left to go. Brilliant. What's going to happen now is Donna Troy is going to get killed. Now, it's always going to be Donna Troy. I did a tweet last week. I sent a deflection. I said, is Jason Todd the person that's going to get killed? Because they put out a trailer saying one Titan's going to fall. So I put out a deflection. Why? Because in the trailer, you saw next to the coffin, it was Donna's lasso. <laughs> lasso. And... Uh, it was a big mistake by DC there. Big mistake. You could see which one had died. It was Donna Troy. So I tried to deflect it. I don't know if, if I managed to fool a few people. I think I did. Uh, so I thought this is where Donna Troy is going to get poof, sniped in the head or something. Or, or sniped in the heart or sniped in a critical area. And she's going to die after they've defeated uh, Deathstroke. But no. Uh, what happens is they start to... Um, well, they, they deal with the Cadmus people first. And then the people, the, the fairground people come out and they're just like, Yay, well done, Titans, who are hiding. And then uh, that electric pylon falls down that we saw right at the beginning, foreshadowing. At least it's foreshadowing. You've got to give them something, I suppose. Donna grabs it and is electrocuted to death. And it felt really tame uh I, I should have i should have felt sad i didn't feel sad because like i said donna troy really hasn't been that involved in this season at least not enough for us to care about yes she had the episode with aqualad um but apart from that and the themiscarans there's really hasn't been that much to get kind of behind her and so with such a tame way of going out, particularly when you've got a half Kryptonian demigod to fight against and a super soldier to fight against, and this is the way that she goes out. I think what they were trying to say, and I could be wrong, but I think what they were trying to say is it doesn't matter if you're going up against a super soldier. It doesn't matter if you're going up against a demigod. It can be the smallest of things. And uh, uh, to be, to to make you perform the, the greatest of sacrifices just to save someone. And we have seen in, in, in Batman... I mean, I'm a Batman fan, so I, I'm using this specifically on Batman's side. We have seen Batman do some ludicrous things just to save a child, to save a tramp. You know, to save uh, some somebody which you or I might think is unnecessary versus this 
you know, well, well, no, no, let the Trump die. Batman's more important. If Batman dies, saving a Trump, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But it's not. It, it, it's about the sacrifice. But it didn't work for me. It didn't work, and I didn't feel sad. And at the funeral, uh, after they take it back, at the funeral, which is a little bit weird, um, Rachel says, you know, I, I might be able to bring her back. So we might not have seen the end of Donna Troy. Potentially. Maybe Raven can bring her back through some sort of magic, that tragic. And we see a little clip of uh, Jason Todd. Jason Todd just turned up on his bike uh, at the end of the episode. It was the only uh, cameo that he made. He seems to be drifting at the moment. And then we have uh, this... Uh, when they get there, you go, it's... Let me go back. There we go. He's on his. He's just on his bike. He just turned up to say, see you. So that's what Dick was looking at. Again, that just sounds weird. Uh, that's what Dick was looking at. He saw Jason turn up. There you go. And I think this actor is just so good at playing Jason Todd. Just so good. I know it sounds a bit of a half, a backhanded compliment. This this actor is such a so good at playing an obnoxious little brat. <laughs> but no, you you do. You have to be a good actor to do that. He pulls it off because he pulls it off in a way that he's still charming. He pulls it off in a way that he's still very good at what he does. You know, he does have skills to back up what he says for the most part. He just overreaches and, and thinks he's a bit better than he is. He thinks he's sort of at Batman's level. He's not at Batman's level. He was given to the Titans by Bruce to train him up. Dick was just like, train. Uh, Bruce was like, to Dick, please train him. Do, you know, do te teach him things I can't. Uh, which is probably more of a humanity side of things. Uh, so they go back to the uh, Titans Tower. There's a weird conversation between Dick and Bruce here. I want... What I want... I know there's... It's easy to say, what I wanted, and you, you don't get. And if you don't get, you get disappointed. But I don't think the conversation flowed particularly well. And I think what was needed here... Never mind what I wanted. I think what was needed here was a bit more of the conversation that happened between uh, Dick and Bruce at the end of the Prodigal storyline where Bruce comes back after going on hiatus, where he's going around the world setting up these bat caves and stuff, where he comes back uh, to take the, the mantle of the bat back again from Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson took over um, relatively soon after Nightfall, uh, Night Quest, Night's End, after Night's End, um, when Bruce went AWOL. And he comes back and, and Dick has this conversation with him. They have this quite argumentative conversation between them. Uh, and it ends with uh, Bruce saying, look, you know, the reason why we are the way we are, the reason why we argue and compete and all this sort of stuff between us is because this is what the relationship is between a father and a son. And it was beautiful. And it was beautiful and it made perfect sense. And this episode was about family. And so it, to me, it just would have made such more sense if they did that prodigal-esque conversation here where, where Bruce was basically saying, this is about family, da, 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 because, you know, you're my son. You know, you're not physically, not not legally, but you are my son and, and, and I am your father sort of, sort of business. But... You know, again, you know, you'd argue that it's just me wanting my own personal thing coming in there. Uh, and then they uh, come together for dinner. Again, it's sort of just dragging on and nothing's really happening. They, they come along for dinner and uh, then they hear that there's uh, something that's happening. There's a, there's a naughty thing happening in some place. And uh, nobody knows if any of the Titans are going to stay together nobody knows if they're going to don the costumes again and then uh dove gets up first and starts walking and she's like well come on and they all start going out to get dressed and uh, then we see the last shot of the titans uh walking down the street uh garth's just run past hold on i'll see if i can get garth in here as well there we go we got we got uh connor superboy ravenger hawk nightwing dove starfire Beast Boy, and then 
making their cameo in this episode as well. We making their cameo in this episode as well. Give it crypto. Crypto would have loved to have seen a cape. Would have loved to have seen a, a super super a red cape. It would it would have been fine. It wouldn't have been goofy. It would have made perfect sense for crypto. Because uh, this this has been a good boy. This has been a good boy this season as well. And that's where it ended. And then we got a, a little bit at the end uh, where um, Starfire's sister turns up. Uh, Starfire's sister turns up on Earth. She plants herself into uh, this woman here, who I think was the woman at the fairground. I could be wrong. I think it was the woman at the fairground who was saved. Her and her daughter were saved. That's by Donna grabbing the pylon. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could just go back and look, but... Fuck it. Uh, but she she literally plots herself into a body, and then she starts to uh, take over the body, and then the body becomes the body of Starfire's sister. And so it looks like next season uh, she's going to be at least one of the antagonists for season three. Who knows where else it goes? Are they going to do uh jason todd's death next season uh setting up for a potential red hood in season four if they get a season four i don't know uh so yeah what i would i would like to see for next season i'd love to see now i know they're making a batgirl film but i, th I believe it's still a long way off i'd like to see batgirl come in as a, a love interest for dick grayson i'd love to see barbara gordon become a love interest for dick grayson uh, rekindle their relationship um again keep that connection with gotham and batman i'd love to see like i said batman in suit with jason todd in suit as an aesthetic that would be that visual would be incredible starfire can can she can she be orange please <laughs> can she please can she go orange please can we get a little bit more Starfire for our Starfire? Can we have her fly? Can we, you know, can we make her more Starfire than she is? She's she's sassy black woman right now. And not so much Starfire. There's, there's not much which really... Uh, although she's had an interesting... You know, the, the actress is very good. And the story that they put her, is, it, it put her in has been interesting. It doesn't feel like Starfire. Um, Hawk and Dove... I think their stories kind of have come to an end, so I think there may be more ancillary characters in, in season three. I mean, or find them something. Find them something to do. And of course, Ravenger and, and Jason Todd could be interesting, particularly with Jericho inside of uh, Ravenger. <laughs> Just imagine if there's, some, if there's some naughtiness going on there and then Jericho assumed control of Ravenger. Whoa, that could get a little bit awkward. Um, uh, Raven doing Raveny stuff, I suppose. <laughs> Just Raven and Garth. Yeah, Raven and Garth. I'd like to see a bit of a development in the in their relationship. Uh, Connor. I think there's a lot of potential for Connor. I could see Connor having a spin-off TV show. I really could. I could, you know, it, make him a little bit more worldwide, um, which he will get anyway, simply by being with the Titans. And you could have a, a, a really intriguing potential character for their own spin-off TV show. That's, that's what I'm going to say with that. And then uh, Dick Grayson, for two seasons now, has been very heavily burdened. I would like to see, because I think, uh, is it Brendan? I think it's Brendan who plays uh, Dick Grayson, uh, an Australian actor. Uh, I really want to see a little bit of a, a lighter Dick Grayson. A, a, you know, weight of the world taken off his shoulders. Dick Grayson is, is a quite a bubbly character in the comics. He, you know, he's not silly by any stretch of the imagination. You know, he, he's, he's a mature character, but he's, you know, he, there is a much lighter side to, to Dick Grayson than there is to, to Bruce Wayne and Batman. And so I'd like to see him lighten up a bit. And I think the introduction of, of Barbara Gordon Batgirl uh, could do that. Uh, could do that. So so hopefully, you know, if that dynamic is brought into place, uh, that would be awesome. Wouldn't mind seeing Spoiler. Wouldn't mind seeing uh, Spoiler come along. Uh, that would be pretty funky. Even though we don't have Tim Drake yet, uh, I think uh, introducing the Spoiler character could be could be relatively interesting uh, with the Clue Master. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I mean, it's it's a great show. It's a thoroughly enjoyable show. I know I've gone on for a long, long time here, but I think there's been plenty to discuss. But I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links there in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.